So programming devices from the Arduino IDE is pretty easy. You just click upload and away it goes. But let's say that you had to upload code onto a thousand of something. Like for example, when I had this trig board here, I had to pre-burn a thousand of these boards with code. So instead of using the upload button, I programmed them using the command line. This is also useful if you wanted to uh, give somebody a file, like a hex file or a bin file. Then they can just take that and upload the code themselves without compiling on their end. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so I've got three examples here. First will be with an AVR. This is the AT Mega 328. The same microcontroller you find on all of the UNO boards, the Arduino Mini, and a million others. Then we'll get into the ESP8266. This is uh, the ESP-12S module here. And then finally the ESP32. So I'm going to show you how to do this on both the Mac and Windows side here. And uh, I've got this very, very simple sketch here to test everything out with. So let's just get started. And I've got three examples here to show you this. The first is the uh, standard AVR, the AT Mega 328. This is the microcontroller that you find on all of the Arduino Uno boards, the Arduino Mini, and a million other boards. Then we'll get into the ESP8266. This is the ESP-12S module and then finally the ESP32. So now let's just go into the Arduino IDE over here and change a few settings here. Go to preferences and make sure that you have the verbose output checkboxes selected here. And you're gonna want to set up your target in tools. So you go to tools and then make sure that you've got the right board selected. We're going to start with that AVR, so we're going to set that to Arduino Mini, the P, and we have the, uh, the USB port selected there as well. And we want to test this out by first just uploading and making sure that our sketch uploads. There we go, we're good. And check the serial monitor, and we're running. And this is just a very simple sketch here, I just, just to show you how this works. Now, because we've got that verbose output, we can actually go in here, all the way up here, just past the red text. And this last line right here is all we need to then take, copy that out, that last line, and then open up Terminal. And on the Mac side, we've got Terminal. Well, I'll show you on the, uh, the Windows side here in a second. But we're just going to copy and paste that last line right here, and then there it goes. Now, like I said, if you had to do this on a million boards, <laughs> all you have to do is hit the up key, enter. And it's that easy. Again, up key, enter. But what if you wanted to send somebody a file? Well, that's very easy to do. All you do is go to sketch export compiled binary we'll go to sketch show sketch folder and then we've got these two hex files in here and the one we want here is the one that does not have the bootloader text in there so all we need is the path to this so if you were to send this file to somebody uh, I'll show you on the Mac first obviously but what we need to do is get the path for this. So you can put this anywhere you want, and on a Mac, just hold the Option key, Edit, and then copy the path name. And I'm just going to go back to our test sketch here and just paste that path in right there, just so we've got it. Okay, so I just had to get the full uh, path. We just pasted it into the command, or the uh, terminal. I'm going to put that back up here for a second. And what I'm going to do is take the path to where the hex file is, take that, and then all the way at the end of this here, you'll see this W colon here. And this is where the target hex file is. So I'm going to just wipe that. Oops. I'm going to take that part of it out. So just scroll across here. And then you'll see we've got the two colons there, W colon colon I. And right in between those two colons there is where we put the new path to where that hex file is. Just like that. And make sure there's no spaces 
after or before or after those colons and now we should be good and keep in mind that this is all uh, hard-coded in here so if you changed the USB port or anything like that you see here that that would need to change as well so now I'm going to copy that out of there go back to terminal and test it out and there it goes no issues again up arrow enter pretty cool huh now I'm gonna jump over to the Windows side and we'll do the same thing okay so now we're at my uh, Windows side here this is a virtual machine uh, just keep in mind that uh, when you install the Arduino IDE over here, make sure that you download the uh, .exe and install it that way. Don't install it from the Windows Store or whatever it's called over here because when you do that, you get an access denied when you try to do this because the Windows Apps folder has some weird permissions on it that I couldn't figure out how to get rid of. So. Anyway, once I installed it manually, everything works great. So you see we've got a successful upload here. And then if we scroll up here, you'll see that we have the same kind of thing right there. That last line, I'm going to copy and paste that out. Here is that full path we would use. But if we went and just tested this out, I'm going to go down here and type CMD and when you do that and run it you get this here the command prompt and then we're gonna go ahead and paste that in and you see we get this error and the reason for that is because in our path here we have spaces so we have to take care of that and what we do is put this part here all in quotes so just put that in quotes and then scroll down here and then right here put that in quotes as well so we want to put this in quotes here as well because that's got a space now we'll copy that out and test it again and there it goes pretty cool same thing as before with a custom hex file that you might send somebody okay so we do the same thing as before I'm gonna go in here and click properties and then just grab the path right here and then also grab the file name and put it right in between those two colons again and let's test it out and there you have it so that works great now let's test out the ESP8266. So I'm going to actually use the same exact sketch as before. The only difference now though is that we need to change our tools. So this is important because if you were to send somebody a bin file for the ESP8266 like I do with the trig board, sometimes I modify settings and instead of somebody trying to figure out how to install all of those libraries, like when you come here to the wiki and I go to base firmware, you see that if somebody were to go and install this or you know want to upload the code themselves they have to go and install all of these libraries in, in order for it to compile but because we're sending them a pre-compiled binary file they really don't have to all they have to be able to do is talk to the ESP8266 or in other words they need to be able to upload something to it so what we need to do then is just go here back to Arduino and in this example would be for the ESP8266. So in preferences, you need to add the boards manager URL for the ESP8266 like I've got here. And that would be true for the ESP32 or anything else you're trying to upload for. Um, so then in tools, you could set up your target, which of course is the ESP8266. We'll just use generic. Let's go with a fast upload speed and let's see if everything else looks good here yeah let's go four and one okay that all looks good let's go ahead and make sure we can upload and there it goes cool we're getting the test text output now it's the same exact thing as before so we go up here now grab this out of there and I'll just put it up here for now just so you can see it 
And there's the whole thing. Now you see that, like, if that might be a cool video too to do in the future is to talk about what all of these things in here mean and how you can actually tweak them. So you notice that this time we're seeing ESP tool instead of AVR dude. So it's a different tool that's used to program behind the scenes these boards. And then right here at the end, we have now a bin file. It's not a hex file. So if we went to sketch here, export compiled binary, you see now there's a bin file. And that's what we would use to uh, program the ESPD-266. So you would copy the path of that. And again, it does look a little different here. We don't have the two colons. So right here. So we just take this whole thing off the back of it and put in our new path. Right, let's take that out of there, go back to terminal, paste it in. So that's how it's done with the ESP8266 and then I'm just gonna quickly show you what it looks like with the ESP32. All right, now I've got the ESP32 hooked up and this is gonna be kind of a slightly different uh, method to do this, but it's, it's also very useful to know how to do this as well. So I've already got the ESP32 board package installed. Everything looks good there. I've got the node 32S selected. We'll go ahead and do a test upload. And there it goes. Take a quick peek at the monitor. Everything looks good there. Now, what we're going to do this time, instead of going to sketch and export a compiled binary, what we're going to do is actually go to where the uh, compiler here put those files. So if I go and pull this line out here, and we scroll all the way down, you'll see why I'm going to do this. So we've got the bootloader bin file there, and then if we keep going, you'll see here, Here's a bin file right there. And then all the way at the end, there's another bin file that's part of our test sketch here. So there's two bin files. This one contains some kind of partition information. And I'm not an ESP32 expert, but I do see that we have two bin files here that we need to load in. And if we did a export compiled binary, we don't get two bin files. So what I'm going to do to guarantee that everything uploads exactly the way it does here is go and find those files. So these are just two paths here. So if I go all the way to the end here, and I'm just going to go to this folder here. So I've got that selected, and on a Mac it's pretty easy to do, but we'll just go to Go, Go to Folder, and it brings me to this. So I see the two bin files right there. So I could pull those out of here, and which I'll do right now. Okay, there we have it. So now I'm going to grab this path, and that's the first one we see here. And then the second one, the partitions. Paste that in right there, and now we can go test it out. Cool, and there it goes. So if you need this kind of thing, I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.